Sure. Sorry about being just a minute or so behind. Crazy day. <clears throat> Vicky is here. She's pulling her props out. There we go. Hello. <laughs> She's pulling her props out. So I'm just going to give her a second to get all set up and talk for a second. So thanks. Welcome. Three people already joining us. Perfect. So if you have not used YouTube Live, I'm actually using Restream that to project through YouTube, which is great because that means that we can share a slideshow. Um, and you can chat with questions and they will come up to us. It does take a 15 second delivery delay. So when we ask for uh, questions or if you type something, it's going to take 15 seconds for it to get to us um, before it will read it. But <clears throat> it's okay. It works and this is free. So that's how this is working. Um, I'm really excited to have Vicki here. Uh, she's going to share at least some of the wisdom about brushing and oral health. I see her teeth that she has. So I'm sure she's going to show us that. Um, as well as uh, just talking about maintaining good health. Um, if you have other questions that she doesn't answer or as we go along, I'll be watching the chat and either kind of insert the questions as it makes sense or we will um, or wait till the end and do the questions there. So that will be great. Okay, so I am going to plug our PowerPoint in and turn you over to Vicki, but I'll kind of be working on the computer and let you introduce yourself. But she's in Fort Collins. Right. She's awesome. I'll let you say more details about yourself, but thank you for joining us. Thank you, Amy, so much for having me here. I'm yeah. really excited to be here. It's always fun to um, talk about teeth. So today I'm going to be talking about nutrition for teeth, and we'll be talking about uh, food and products and uh, what happens to, how can you remineralize, how do you use um, how can you make best use out of what you have at home? So it'll be uh, simple stuff. It'll be fun. And um, yay. Yeah. Yeah. So we probably have some Show adults and, and some moms. Okay. So great. Things about kids and early kids and right. getting teeth and starting well. And then what about keeping when you, uh, well. yeah, keeping it well or. A little bit so, of recovery. Right. So for the adults that might be here on our session today that don't have kids or don't have little kids, this uh, applies to everybody. Yay. So. Yay. Okay. Getting this, hopefully. Even though it's called Tooth Talk for Moms. And um, yes, most of our channel is moms. So, well, that's not true. I don't know. Moms are awesome. People are awesome. It applies to everybody. Kids are awesome. Babies are awesome. Also that. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. We lost you for a second because, okay, I'm going to share it, but it's going to be like this. I'm sorry, everyone. Hold on. Is that right? Going to yeah. try to, let me stop sharing really quick. Say more brilliant things for a second. Say more brilliant things. I was having this trouble, not just because we're rushed, but actually because my computer is doing a weird thing and it's not properly sharing my PowerPoints. Well, so. just in case um, anybody else has been really rushed to get here today and it might be stressed I th as we're overcoming our little uh, PowerPoint and um, technical issues, let's just kind of get settled and take a breath. How would that be? That would be great. <sighs> so nice deep breath in. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and just let it out. And um, we'll give everybody a moment, too, in case you ran to your computer and are here without water. We'll, we'll be staying hydrated through the whole thing. So get your water. We'll take a breath and um, just really get centered and calm down and focused. And all the talk about nutrition today, putting these slides together kind of made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's some yummy food that is really, really helpful for us. So if we need to also, we can just uh, kind of run the slides on the side. Okay. And yes, we might have to. I am... The problem is my computer's sending it to another 
monitor, but it's not hooked up. So then it's messing everything up. Um, okay. I can't remember how to fix that. <laughs> so I am the least techie person in the room for sure. Okay. We're just going to go based on this. I can't go into that. Uh, let's see if presenter view works. Nope, so that locks me out of everything. Okay, we're going to share this screen, but it's going to be this size. So okay. I'll be able to click through them, but it just won't be quite as big and pretty. That's quite all right. Okay. Share it. Application window. Share. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. I'm going to click to this next one. You guys can see that next one, I'm sure. Thank you for your patience. Thank oh, you, you can't much. see it, but here you go. Here's there the it next is. One. All right. Okay. Okay, so that's just my introductory slide. So welcome again, everyone. My name is Vicki Flint. I have a dental hygiene practice in Fort Collins. And what I mean by an independent dental hygiene practice is that I, I do have an office and uh, I see patients there. There's no dentist there. So if you like a calmer, quieter, more relaxed, you know, at, at our office, you're only a stranger once. When, <laughs> once you've met us, uh, your family. So my husband is frequently there. He's my office uh, assistant mm -hmm. and manager, and he really helps out at the front desk. So he's a retired fire captain. It's really fun to hear stories. Some, if you like fire stories and... Uh, stuff he's and plus he's just a super nice guy so he is we, nice. we have fun at our office so yeah. and um, all right I need to just say my little disclaimer here that I am a registered dental hygienist and I'm not a doctor so I am not advising you medically in any way the information presented here is for educational and informational purposes it should not be construed as diagnosing, treating, or claiming to cure any disease. If you're experiencing medical issues, please consult the appropriate health care provider for you. And attending this presentation does not establish you as my client. I would love to see you as my client, but you need to call the office and make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and to the best of my knowledge, all the images that I took from online sources have been utilized legally. And if I've made an error that way, I will uh, fix it right away and remove those images when I discover the error. So if you see this later in the future and the images are gone, that's why. Okay. So here's what we're gonna talk about. Nutrition for healthy teeth, tooth maintenance at home, and back from the brink. What, how can you remineralize if cavities are an issue? That's what everyone's here really here for. No, I'm just kidding. You came for the remineralization, but you're gonna stay for the rest of it. So, <laughs> so it's very, all right. So the teeth are this one of the strongest parts of your body. And they're made from proteins such as collagen and minerals like calcium. So already, right, you're, we're already getting uh, some clues about nutrition here. Good protein, good minerals. And the tooth development, the earliest part of tooth development starts very early in pregnancy at six weeks. Wow. When the cell, as the cells are starting to uh, migrate into what they're going to become later in life, they're already forming. So here we have a picture of that on the right side of the screen. Wow. And then what will become the hard tissues of the teeth, they start getting organized at three to four months of gestation. So very, very early. And those primary teeth, they start to erupt through the gums when the baby is six months old. And aren't those cute? Those little lower teeth Aww. coming in. <laughs> little so, pearls. Yep. All right. So, uh, so good nutrition for the mom is super important in pregnancy for the development of the teeth. And the mother's diet should have adequate amounts of calcium, phosphorus, vitamin C, and vitamin D. And a uh, good healthy protein also. I didn't put that on the slide, but that's really important to help set the matrix. 
And these are the same nutrients that will keep teeth healthy all throughout your life. So like I said in the beginning, as we were setting up, it doesn't matter where you are in your stage of life. Mm -hmm. It'll be, this will be helpful information yes. for you. So uh, are you going to talk more about each of these specifically or can I ask a question? I'm going to go through yeah. calcium, phosphorus, vitamin C, and Perfect. D. Oh, look, the next slide. Calcium, which is the most abundant mineral in the body. It uh, makes up much of our um, bones and our teeth. Plays a role also in heart health and muscle function and nerve stabilization. Nice. So, by the way, a lot of people, when they're upset by the news and stuff like that, taking a calcium can mm. be super helpful. And here's the, so the typical calcium rich foods, of course, are um, naturally the dairy products. And um, there is a whole list of yummy things there, seeds and fish, mm. beans and lentils. And by the way, uh, one thing I did not put on the slide is the Sally Fallon book called oh, Traditional. Yeah. Nourishing um, Traditions. Nourishing Traditions, yeah. thanks. So when it comes to beans and lentils, uh, it would be better to soak them and ferment them first. That would definitely increase the nutrition. And then phosphorus is next. Phosphorus is awesome. It helps convert uh, food into usable energy. So it's not only responsible for metabolism, but as you think about a developing baby, that phosphorus mm -hmm. is really important in all those metabolic functions and all those development, uh, all that activity going on. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then here's some phosphorus rich foods. And I took this right off of healthline.com. And I, I found other websites have other uh, orders, like mm -hmm. some put dairy at the top and and nuts right at the top and the meats lower on the list. So, but they were pretty much the same list. Probably meats are more dense. Yeah. Would be my guess. <laughs> Mine too. Now here's a thing about vitamin C. I want everybody to know that it's not just ascorbic acid. And what you're looking at now is a picture of the molecule of the whole vitamin C molecule. And you'll notice how ascorbic acid runs around the outside edge there, just like the skin of an orange. Mm -hmm. So it's so interesting, isn't it, that citrus is so high in vitamin C when the fruit itself is structured like the molecule mm -hmm. is, where all the good stuff is on the inside. And one of the things I wanted to point out is at the bottom of this molecule where it says P factors, K factors, and uh, J factors, those are really important in laying down good, healthy gum tissue and the um, capillaries, all our blood vessels to our teeth. So super, super important. That was my question. Was vitamin C just gum health or was it actually in the structure of the tooth matrix also? It's in the, it's in everything. Okay. I'm, I'm, my understanding is in, in the whole body. Okay. Yeah, it's the structure muscles. of all connective tissue, right? It's yes. Or it's tissue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's part of the matrix of, uh, of teeth. All right. Here's some vitamin C sources. In addition to oranges and grapefruits and lemons, all that. So probably, and there's a nice yummy looking picture. Now mm -hmm. who's hungry? <laughs> yes. I'm glad I ate a little bit just now. And then uh, vitamin D is also super important for bones. Oops, sorry. And besides sunlight, and I, I love getting outside. I hope everybody likes to get outside and get fresh air, move mm -hmm. around, play. And um, now when I put on here on this list, it includes fortified cereals and juices, but I really don't uh, recommend those. Mm -hmm. It's so much better to get it uh, just in its best, rawest, purest form. I don't like fortified cereals, although on any list um, that is a traditional medical thing, they always really push the right. fortified stuff. And right. I just put it on there with a note that said, <laughs> not the best. Not, not the best. Natural sources are better, not fortified. 
I love that you have cod liver oil on there because that's what I think is the best usually. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And so the bottom line is eat real food and, of course, organic whenever possible. That's how to have healthy teeth. And that. now I'd like to touch a little bit on whole food nutrition. That is, uh, I'm a big fan of standard process products. They actually have, they're part of my own personal health journey. And working with a practitioner that uses these products put me on a completely different path in life and helped me with an issue that I was told by the medical industry was impossible to fi mm -hmm. fix. And it would just get worse and worse. And you know, you're only this broken right right now, but someday you'll be this broken. Mm -hmm. When you get down here, we'll put you on a medication you'll be on for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in my 20s when I got that news. So I thought, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already suffering this much. So mm -hmm. I don't want to wait till I'm more broken right. down. So anyways, I'm, that's why I'm such a big fan of standard process. And this uh, is Catalin. Now, uh, this is a list of uh, supplements that are just super uh, good for teeth and health. Now, the Catalin is, think of it like a multivitamin, mm -hmm. lactic, uh, uh, calcium lactate powder, sorry, is um, great because it's the calcium that's in such a very bioavailable, very usable form. And Nasetol is fun, especially for kids. It's part of the B vitamin uh, spectrum. And actually for the kids that have a sweet tooth, mm -hmm. it's nice for them to have a chewable, and Nasetol is chewable. So, and this Cal, uh, Catalan chewable also mm -hmm. tastes very good. And um, so if you can get your kids to eat lactic acid yeast wafers, which are kind of chalky and they may or may not I like them. I think they're them. sweet. But, like oh, them. there you go. Yeah. And then, uh, anyways, I, I I think kids can be bribed by that, <laughs> and, by the inositol later. And it's a great supplement. It's a uh, mm. part of the B vitamin spectrum. And it. Uh, and by the way, for people that have sensitive teeth, inositol has been shown to help uh, help that. Did not know that. That's really so, cool. That gum line sens tooth sensitivity. Mm -hmm used to have it before I did gaps. And there's Biodent. Biodent is wonderful for the teeth. There's, it's not in a chewable form, but uh, those just that shows the three sizes that are available for it. All right. You can chew them. It just means it's not flavored, right? <laughs> you right, can chew right. all of these. It's just that exactly they're not sweet or flavored. Exactly. And Biodent might be one of those supplements that Moms have to kind of mash and break up and hide it in applesauce or something. So, all right, let's talk about maintenance at home. So let's know what you're dealing with and get some handy gadgets and effective techniques and you'll have clean, healthy teeth at home. So first I want to show you what plaque looks like. A lot of people think plaque is the hard stuff we scrape off teeth. It's not. Mm -hmm. When you eat um, something that's, uh, even sometimes yogurt can, like, oh, my teeth feel ugh. Mm -hmm. and Fuzzy. Fuzzy. That's a yeah. great description. And then have you ever kind of taken your fingernail and scraped mm -hmm. it off? It's white and smushy, yeah. right? Yeah. And just kind of goes away. Yeah. That's plaque. Okay. So if you look at it under a microscope, do you know what you see? Kind of looks like, do you like science? Yes. Okay. Definitely. Because if you don't, you might go, oh, gross. <laughs> Anyways, it kind of looks like bugs and worms swimming around. Ah. Because you can see the bacteria that's in the matrix of it. Of okay. Plaque, and it's sticky, cool. like like peanut butter on a knife. Hmm. So if you're in a hurry and you do, you know, scrape your finger over your teeth, does nothing pretty much. Hmm. So. Okay. And then the, the other stuff, calculus is what we call it. Tartar is what uh, TV ads call it. This stuff will not brush off. This is a picture of the tongue side of the lower front teeth. Uh, no, it is not your teeth. It never <laughs> looked like that. 
No, Anyways, it's so uh, so minerals in the saliva build up there. That's the hard stuff that gets taken off. And under a microscope, it looks like a dried out sponge with sharp mm -hmm. edges. Mm -hmm. And you can see how the gums there are kind of rolled. And uh, mm -hmm. that's because they're getting inflamed. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. little gingivitis going on right there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't advise some people, you know, it, it, it's all right if you pull it out yourself, but some people take things in their mouths that I wish they wouldn't. Like if you want to get, if you are a big builder upper and want to take it off at home, I'd prefer to show you how to do it. And is it true that that can show a phosphorus deficiency to have that calcium deposits or is it other minerals more? It can. And okay. I'm working on that more. I want uh, later this year, I'll be taking a class actually on Cool. dietary changes to balance that balance out the saliva cool so it's to have um, you back to teach yeah. on what oh, you learn. learn yeah well and that's another uh, supplement of uh, called fast food liquid can mm -hmm. help with that it's very effective for some people not so much for others and okay. I haven't figured out why that is yet but Hey, I thought it was just phosphorus, but you said other minerals. So maybe it's whether it's phosphorus deficiency for calcium or other minerals that need something different. Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. I don't have all the answers on that one yet. And, you know, one seminar I was at, they said that it uh, can be helped by more cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. However, you know, my body, my lab, I have to try right. these things. So I really push the cruciferous vegetables. I've never had such rapid hard tartar buildup in my whole huh. life. So I kind of went, Interesting. what? So, Interesting. So for me, that was not the answer. Hmm. All right, stain happens. Stain can happen even in children, but uh, there are the common stainers listed there. And some spices even can um, create stain. And uh, sometimes I just go, huh, I wonder what is this stain all about? But mm. anyways, Cleans those are, nice. yeah, after the stain comes off, looks a lot better. So these, these are the things we want to uh, prevent from forming on teeth or and or remove from teeth. The easiest place, now uh, the soft sticky plaque we saw on the other slide, mm -hmm. That is part of the matrix also that can that contributes to the hard uh, calculus deposits okay. can be. So okay. so getting keeping that off teeth can only be good. And what's what's the big deal about having buildup on the teeth? Do you talk about that later? Um, no, just that it's right, well in the um, Oh, for example, the slide that had the plaque, you can see the red, how red and puffy the gums get. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I'll just demonstrate is that, you know, when you have, let's just say this is your tooth and this sleeve here is the gums. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, that's a terrible sleeve to have for, that, that's a better Long one. Sleeve. That's a better one. Because this is, so this is oh. the edge of your gums right here. Okay. And at this point, the gums are not anchored to your teeth. Just like this sleeve is on your hand, it only leans up against your teeth. Okay. So uh, further down here is where it actually anchors. Okay. So think of the nuisance it would be in the shower to wash your neck while wearing a turtleneck, right? <laughs> yeah. So that is the nuisance we have with our teeth. Because if we could pull this back, we'd see that under the gums on the tooth, Mm -hmm. uh, everything that's building up out here on the tooth is also building up mm -hmm. on the tooth down here where it's hidden by the cuff. Mm -hmm. Now, the scientific name for this cuff is the gingiva. And just like any body part followed by itis, like tonsillitis, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it means inflammation of. So that means, so gingivitis is puffy, big, puffy, swollen gums because of all the stuff that's under here and along here, hmm. most of it's the uh, bacteria in plaque. So, okay, makes sense. Yeah, so it makes inflammation and inflammation in the mouth can affect inflammation that's happening elsewhere in the body. Hmm. Inflammation happening elsewhere in the body can contribute to the gums uh, being inflamed as well. So makes sense. We just wanna keep it all, keep all, infla all inflammation down. Hey, that makes sense. Let's talk about some gadgets. Now, I 
thought about um, these are really super handy gadgets for uh, getting along the gum lines in addition to of course a toothbrush and a um, there's a manual one and we'll we'll be talking about that more later but sometimes kids um, would prefer maybe to use one of these little handy brushes. They're called end tuft brushes. And especially if they have a lot of buildup at the gum line, it's super easy. And I also, for adults, I call these TV tools because mm. when we're tired and we, the pillow is calling, we do <laughs> not want a big project. So do it with TV, but you can um, do little circles at the gum line and be tracing this brush at the gum line. Mm. Now, I really encourage people to learn to use their tongue to help them know that they're doing a good job. Okay. So you know how great it feels after you have your mm -hmm. teeth professionally cleaned? Mm -hmm. Well, when you're done brushing your teeth, if you run your tongue over mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel that great, you're missing something. Mm -hmm. That rough that you're feeling, learn, see if you can learn what rough feels like to your mm -hmm. tongue and, and the difference between rough and smooth. Yeah. Because sometimes it's annoying because you know you brush your teeth and it's like oh, that still feels rough down <laughs> yeah. there. So you rebrush, it still feels rough. Like oh, what? Are, what is it going to take to get it off? Well, one of these little gadgets yeah. are super handy. This one's double ended even, so it has yeah. um, two different um, uh, angles. So some people like one angle for some teeth and mm. another angle for other teeth. Hmm. All right, cool. Let's see what the next slide is going to show us here. This shows us that proper 45 degree angle into the gums to brush your teeth. And I just want to remind everybody that, um, yeah, you can go to the next one. Thank you. And there's all the, the, the uh, proper ways to brush. Please remember that teeth and gums are you know, teeth and skin. It's not the barbecue grill. So for the people that take their toothbrush and uh, that's, um, you're not really doing as good a job as you think you are. So aggression is not so great. Yeah. Should make but, a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> the teeth is not the barbecue grill. That's right. Don't be aggressive. But, uh, and that shows how to angle an electric toothbrush, the Oral-B electric toothbrush down um, into the gums. I actually, so this is from Oral-B, but I actually prefer that you use the edge of the bristle um, so that the, the cup of it is also covering the teeth. I actually brought one with me right here. This is a uh, so the, the point of this is to get in that cuff, right? That's why you're talking about all these angles is so that you can get inside this. Exactly. Okay. Oh, can I use your, your hand yeah. again? You because when, you're, when your toothbrush is coming in at about a 45 degree angle here and you're doing these, these little tiny circles, mm -hmm. not only will the bristles splay and clean the visible part of your tooth, but the bristles will also sweep under mm -hmm. this, this cuff right here. Remember mm -hmm. the nuisance of in the shower mm -hmm. with the turtleneck and you, well, that's what your toothbrush is doing, sweeping okay. under here. And um, okay. one of the things about floss I'd like to mention too, if I have any effect on the dental community at all, I am encouraging all my colleagues to not talk about floss as something that happens in between the teeth. Mm -hmm. Because that is a fabulous example of using the same words and not meaning the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because to dental people, in between the teeth means the proximal surface. Do you know what a proximal surface is? <laughs> Not related to teeth. Not, yes. <laughs> so it's the side of the tooth. So where your teeth sit together, sit side by side like mm -hmm. this, th this is a proximal surface. Okay. So it is better to think about floss as a miniature towel that polishes the side of each tooth. Because uh, I would say at least 95% of the people, you know what they miss? The backside of the last erupted tooth. Mm -hmm. They don't floss back there because mm -hmm. why? There's no in between. Yeah. But there is a side, there's a backside. Yeah. And so, Makes and by sense. the way, when I talk about the sides of teeth, 
uh, five sides, okay? Cheek side, mm. tongue side, okay. chewing side, back side, front side. Okay. So the back side is not the tongue side. Right. The back side is that part of the tooth that's so imagine a line right down the middle of your face. The front of the tooth faces uh, that midline. Okay. So your two front teeth right here on top, those are front and front are together. Mm -hmm. But then as yeah. you move away from the midline, there's a uh, the back side could back be what I would call the side. The back side and the front side are okay. side are together mm -hmm. as you go back. Yes. So okay. So just so everybody knows what I'm talking about when I'm I say all the technical tricks. back side. So okay. All right, and let's move on. And that shows that's a good picture of the angulation for Sonicare toothbrushes for people that like those. And did I get a burst on there? I think it's the next picture. I just wanted yep. to tell everybody about the burst toothbrush. It's fairly new to Oops. the market. Sorry, everyone. I forgot the slides. Let's go back. Here's the good picture of the angle on the Sonicare. I forgot to turn them back on. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Yep. And you can leave it there if you want just for the angulation. Okay. But now this is um, Burst. Burst Oral Care is their website. These toothbrushes are not sold in stores, only okay. in uh, only on their website. And um, on the Burst slide, I think it also says ambassador there. And that's because I am supposed to be sure and mention that I am an ambassador for Burst. And uh, I just, I promote it because I really like it. And here's why. I want everybody to be able to get a nice close up look at this toothbrush. Mm. It's black, it's got charcoal in it. Mm. A lot of people like the charcoal and nice feathered edges there. And uh, I find this toothbrush to be a softer, I, I love the bristles, how soft they are. Mm. And also, um, to me, they are a, a less, uh, well, the vibration just is a bit much for me mm. for Sonicare, but this one on the lower power setting is fine. Okay. So. Does and, the charcoal keep coming out for a while or is it? It does. Okay. But um, one great thing I like about Burst is that they have a, a subscription program. Mm. So their toothbrush attachments are $7.50. Mm. Wow. They'll send you a new one every three months. Wow. And um, I'll have to get the code later, remind me, because if people go to that website, if they use a, a code that I give them, they will get a discount. Nice. Great. So, from their usual. And can, is it easy enough for kids to use? Mm -hmm. It is. And to let's see, one of the I things I wanted to mention about the vibration of toothbrushes also and the electrics, like electric, mm -hmm. people ask me all the time, what's better, electric or manual? Or when I ask mm -hmm. people, what kind of toothbrush do you use? It's like the the shame. Yeah. Oh, I use manual. <laughs> but no shame needed. As manual is my favorite, actually, mm -hmm. of all the stuff out there. Manual is the best. Mm -hmm. Reason being, the vibration. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a kind of a two-edged thing. For some people, they love it. And, um, and kids especially. If kids are having uh, sensory issues, mm -hmm. Some kids cannot stand yeah. an electric toothbrush. Other kids with sensory issues find it to be calming, actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's hard to determine. Got to know your kid. Who's going to like what. Yeah. So, um, and for some people, it's really difficult, really, to tell um, where their toothbrush is. Is it at the gum line? And a very common mistake that a lot of people make, too, in brushing is that they're really on the chewing surface and they it's backwards, the yeah. it's backwards. Uh, and so they're really on the chewing surface and what they do is they bend this way towards the cheek and they bend towards the tongue mm -hmm. but you and i can see here how that's see how that's missing the gum yeah, line but you can see if you tip it great thanks for yeah oops yeah uh, we have to go yeah. that way we'll get it so you're missing yeah you're missing the gum line because it's stuck on top Right, on the chewing or surface. Or on the chewing surface. So anyways, just make sure you're off the chewing surface and on the side, angle on the side. I 
brush that way until the last time you gave this talk. And now I brush with the collar and it is different. It is very different. And it really helped with my bad breath that I sometimes couldn't get beyond. Great. All of a sudden I didn't have bad breath anymore. Nice. It's nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Hey, back to the slides. Back to the slides. That's how to cut your gums right there. <laughs> Do not floss like that. The next slide shows you how. That's better. And even in, in picture two there, see how they're pinching their fingers together? Don't do that either. Just uh, the rest of the pictures are better. You can see how the, like the thumbs or the index fingers mm -hmm. are guiding the floss around there. So and uh, just remember to kind of uh, think of the towel up your back on, shimmy. on the side of the <laughs> tooth. And this like slide or picture four right there shows how you go on the side of one tooth up under the gums, then you come back, get away from that little point, and uh, then do the other side mm -hmm. of the tooth there. So yeah, people think that flossing is what happens to the gums, but it's actually what happens to the tooth and the gums benefit. Okay. And then the- Do you go inside the collar of the, like, yeah. does it go down, can you with floss or? It does right here on the side of the okay. tooth. Here, let me turn the better video on for everybody. So it, yes, floss cleans the side right here. Okay. And and the, all this, and you can get it under the cuff. Okay. Yes. Good question. All right, irrigation water picks, they're helpful. Now I uh, I prefer brush floss irrigate. That's what I. Uh, and some people say, oh, yeah, I don't floss anymore. I got a water flosser. The trouble with it is plaque is sticky like peanut butter on a knife. So take that knife to your kitchen sprayer. How high a, a, a blast do you need yeah. to get it off? And there, uh, the water picks data says that at the higher power levels, like six or above, then the... Uh, the water pick water flosser can be as effective. Now um, that said, I, I'm seeing a mixed bag of things clinically as people come in. Okay. Some people still get plaque on their teeth and that's not being removed by the water pick because mm -hmm. it's too sticky for it. Yeah. But their gums are getting stronger. Okay. So there's always that balance between, between the two. Okay. So, all right, let's zip on so we can be sure and have time for all right so here's what you need for what works best successful gadgets they have fit in your hand they have to fit in your mouth most important one they have to fit in your lifestyle if you don't have space at the sink for a water flosser you're not going to use it it'll be under your sink yep and never pull it out <laughs> all right let's talk about remineralization two things going on in the body all the time just like Pac-Man, uh, <laughs> there are cells that go around and uh, clean up cells that are old and dying. And then there's the construction crew that brings in the wheelbarrow that's hopefully full of good nutrients so that your body can rebuild. So, so catabolic and anabolic, I've taught on that a lot. So if you guys, it's catabolic and anabolic, catabolic tear down, anabolic build up. So if you're Bring in the phrases together. Great. All right, and it's all about a balance. It's when, uh, and it comes and goes. It's happening all the time, uh, all the time. So uh, here is a terrific little tool. You can get these on Amazon. It's pH test strips. And um, you'll, what I like to recommend, is because everybody wants to know, well, what should it be? What's mm -hmm. the best? And neutral is really the best. However, um, you'll find if you just kind of get in the habit of testing your own oral pH, like first thing in the morning, then maybe later in the afternoon mm -hmm. or at night, you'll start to understand more about how your body works. Mm. So, cool. but if it's always acidic, for example, that's a problem. Okay. All right, so after eating, typically the mouth and the saliva is acidic. That mm -hmm. does cause demineralization. But then at other times, it's more neutral, and it does the opposite. It actually replenishes that calcium mm -hmm. and phosphorus. 
and then the teeth can remineralize. Okay. And so the first thing we need to do is try to, to identify the patterns or the causes. Okay. Why are my child's teeth always having cavities? Why are my teeth always having mm -hmm. cavities? What's mm -hmm. going on here? So use that salivary test paper and uh, just see uh, the cycles um, of, um, you know, the um, times that you're, like if your mouth is more acidic in the morning, mm -hmm. you might have GERD or something like that going on okay. at night. Maybe you're sleeping with your mouth open so that the salivary, uh, mm -hmm. the saliva is not doing its proper work. That's why people who wear oxygen or babies that come home with oxygen for a couple weeks, oh, that's, that's so bad, bad because they're drying, because the mouth is dry. You know, that would be a real interesting thing to see the effects of. Yeah. yeah. No, I often see a yeast infection in babies who are on oxygen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Really curious. Yeah, like a thrush. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, then uh, also after meals, you can rinse with water or take a drink of water even just to neutralize. <clears throat> and when, sometimes, you know, some people's teeth will actually hurt and ache um, maybe shortly after or maybe a couple hours after having mm -hmm. a dessert for example, mm. because of the effects of sugar. Okay. So if your teeth are hurting because of that, just adding a pinch of baking soda to water and rinse with it. It'll, when they start hurting? It'll change it okay. on the spot. Wow. And um, Or if you know you're going to have candy or if your child is going to have candy, have them rinse with that. And it's really cool to see that on the paper if you test your mm. your. Um, oral pH and you see how acidic it is, then rinse, that'll turn that paper mm. black just like that. Wow. And if you can find the offending food or beverage that is in your diet that keeps your body so, or your mouth so acidic, and remembering fruit juice is not so great. And it could be a hint, like I said earlier, that uh, reflux or GERD is happening. It could possibly be that there's a saliva deficiency as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so really the pH paper, real honest to goodness, real food. And at home care, I just wanted to mention uh, xylitol. And I'm just, I'm going to tell you just a little something about fluoride. Uh, most of us in this circle are not uh, awesome about fluoride. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to touch on why it is that dentists are. Okay. okay? And um, then, of course, the nutrition, you can get some help from uh, Biodent and Cataplex C, Catalin, things like that. Okay. Do you want to talk about fluoride now and, or not yet? Or uh, it oh, it'll be the next slide, Perfect. I think. But oh, yeah. Oh, actually, let me go back to xylitol for a moment. Xylitol, and I, I'm sorry, I meant to grab my bag of xylitol on uh. my way out the door and I missed it. But uh, it is a, a, you can get it in a bag. Okay. You can get it in toothpaste. Mm -hmm. uh, Xyla White is a, made by the Now Company. Is okay. it, that's a toothpaste that has uh, the highest level of xylitol. Okay. What is the deal about xylitol? Because it's a, mm -hmm. a sugar substitute, right? right? Right. How can that possibly help teeth? Well, this one and uh, erythritol also, they are um, uh a non-fermentable carbohydrate. So the bacteria in your mouth, the bad bacteria, there's good and bad in there. there it's all about the balance. Mm -hmm. And the um, bacteria eat it, but they can't digest it. Okay. So their communication falls apart. The, they yeah. die. So, so it's kind of a pesticide. It, it kind of is okay. in the mouth. And by the way, if you do have some at home, do not let your dog near it because it is fatal to dogs. It wow. is very bad for dogs. But it is, and one of the awesome things about xylitol is it actually has been shown when used in low doses over a long period of time, it does remineralize teeth. Okay. It also whitens teeth. Hmm. So... Okay. That's about xylitol. Now, the quick touch on fluoride here is that it is actually a naturally occurring uh, substance. It's as a gas, it's fluorine. 
and um, it's naturally occurring in some lakes and rivers and streams. It okay. comes out of the earth sometimes with volcanic activity. It's in soil that is rich in the minerals that are listed on the screen. And then on the next slide. So is, so I have heard this, that it's natural is good, but is it also because there's like, we're doing too much or is it because they are doing the fake, like a synthetic fluoride that's the problem? Yeah, I, in my opinion, it's the, the synthetic. Not, it's not the amount you're doing necessarily, it's the fact that it's not real, that they synthesize. Right. Well, it's, um, it's a, um, uh, Oh, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Byproduct. It, yes, of industrial, mm -hmm. of industrial stuff. So I'm not excited about that. I'm a natural girl, and I prefer to. And if I had my druthers, I think I I would have us take fluoride out of the water mm -hmm. and use it topically as mm -hmm. needed because we have so much more control over yeah. it that way, right? And it's not a constant, always there kind of thing. Yeah. And I think always there for everyone at the same way because that's not how health works. And this, I just wanted to show you this from the CDC, how the, it um, describes how, the, and this is the reason why it is so um, supported in the dental community, mm -hmm. is because in that remineralization process, fluoride has a real affinity to calcium and okay. it actually makes, a, so our, there's this, um, thing in tooth development called the hydroxy appetite crystal. Okay. And um, and it's a, a matrix and all that. So the fluoro appetite crystal, mm -hmm. so the, the uh, fluoride gets into that. It actually makes a stronger bond than the hydroxy appetite. And it has been, for a lot of people, it has actually successfully okay. uh, reversed cavities, particularly when used topically. Mm. Okay. So that's cool. that's the deal about that, and I think that's all I said about it. But yes, there is trouble with it. Oops, mm -hmm. I I don't know what that story is on the bottom. Sorry, on my uh, I deleted that, and for some reason it didn't stay deleted. But Just there is. Again. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there there's evidence that um, the uh, fluoride, especially in drinking water. Mm -hmm it really tends to gravitate towards the receptor site on the thyroid where iodine is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And the pineal gland seems to like it. So it calcifies, it can calcify the pineal gland and, and cause thyroid trouble. And mm -hmm. we don't want any of that. Neither of those are good. They're not. All right. So there's the summary. Eat real food for good nutrition for healthy teeth. Maintain your teeth at home with good care habits and take steps to allow your teeth to remineralize. And what questions do we have? Okay, one came in already and then people ask their questions or your, yes, your uh, wonderings. So Carol says, it's drinking a glass of water in the morning with apple cider vinegar and lemon, then leaving the lemon wedge in all day and started seeing cavities. Now she realized because of your talk, she's keeping her mouth too acidic. Thanks for the pH info and the baking soda suggestion. Sure. Now the thing though about apple cider vinegar and lemon, it, it is acidic at the start. Mm -hmm. And it can actually, some people that like to bite into lemon wedges, which mm -hmm. I can't imagine, but. Uh, That's me. <laughs> so do you like to do yeah. that? Okay. Not always, but sometimes I do really want them. Neat. That's cool. Yeah. But the You must want the vitamin C, right? Probably. But people that do that too much, do that excessively, they can actually make pitted little mm. pits on the fronts of their teeth because of the acidity. Okay. However, after you swallow it, I think that, uh, Carol, your observation is really good there about um, right here. the um, pH with the lemon sitting on the teeth because mm -hmm. That's, um, yes, but w once you swallow it, it actually helps to um, alkalinize the body. So. Interesting. So a lot of people do apple cider vinegar or lemon for that. So if they're doing it, what would be your suggestion to make sure and how like careful do you have to be about getting back to alkaline? Um, you know, the body has its own natural rhythm. So I wouldn't obsess over it. 
Uh, I've had that question before, so that's why I'm asking you. (laughs) After having some uh, lemon and um, apple cider vinegar, it's it's good to uh, follow it with a little water just to help neutralize that. Okay. And I would not run to the bathroom and brush my teeth right away because some people say, well, wouldn't it be good to, mm-hmm. you know, get, get some toothpaste off. on there. But while you're in that acid environment, mm-hmm. uh, there actually you can actually create little microscopic mm-hmm. scratches on your teeth if you're especially if you're a barbecue grill brusher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. And he says, thanks, very interesting. Nancy says, my gums have receded enough that when I get my teeth cleaned, a couple of teeth get sensitive for a while until the plaque builds up enough to cover the, the exposed oh. areas. Any suggestions? I sure do. Um, one of my favorite products to help that is uh, a toothpaste made by Tom's. Mm-hmm. It is called Rapid Relief. Okay. And it has calcium and arginine. Okay. So it helps... Um, so it looks like what has happened here is, um, so the, when you, the roots of your teeth are exposed, the stuff that covers the roots of our teeth, it's mm-hmm. not as strong and hard as enamel that covers mm-hmm. the crown of the tooth. Okay. So that can be disrupted more easily. It's thinner. Mm-hmm. And if they're, if it's scraped off so that the there are little tubes, tubules inside the tooth structure. Hmm. And uh, it kind of looks like a box of straws with all the little open ends. Okay. So we want to help cover that back up. So you can't, so this toothpaste helps to remineralize for lack of a better word to kind of cover that back up. And it actually helps to, uh, so I would say uh, from the inside out, you could use inositol as a, um, I did not remember that that was helpful. I don't remember you talking about it. You probably did, but I'm very excited to know about that because I use inositol for brain things, but oh, not nice. for teeth. I never because thought about it for teeth. Is it because of the nerve? It's mm-hmm. um, it's a nerve calmer. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Same with teeth. So, yeah, cool. good for the brain, good for the teeth. Cool. Any place nerves need to be calmed. And so, yep, I would say to Nancy that inositol and um, um, try some Toms of Maine okay. and maybe even try uh, brushing with baking soda. Okay. And she says she does still floss, but gets the buildup on the teeth anyway. Is there any mm. way to get the receding gums to grow back? I wish there were. Mm. I don't know of any. Okay. But vitamin C for the gums. So oh, absolutely. it won't hurt oh, anything. One and oh one thing I so this is a brand new thing. I may Ooh. retract what I just said. Because of something a patient of mine um, came to me with okay. who has receding gums. Okay. And um, I thought it actually did look a little bit better. Mm. And um, they had been taking a supplement called um, Oh, it was calcifood. food. Okay. So I thought very cool. interesting. It's um, that, nice. that, that calcium seems to be working very well for them. I'm gonna look it up. What sure. specifically calcium food that it helps with. Okay, Deb Palmer says, what's the normal pH of the mouth? If she does the strips, what should the number of color be at? Okay, so the uh, it's best to have the the pH of the mouth kind of neutral. So I think that's is that what yeah. is neutral more like six point five. No, let me think of it. I have to. I actually just look on my little um, strip box. So which color are you looking for? Or like, in the middle. The middle. In okay. the middle. Yeah. It, the ones if you put the t- the the paper in your mouth and it hardly because it's yellow paper uh-huh. if it hardly changes color at all that that's very acid okay that's that's not good and then you said the baking soda made it black but you don't always want to stay like that yeah you don't alkaline need, okay. yeah you don't need to be that that alkaline okay so we're going to learn something that helped about Deb? calcium food right now hopefully that helps answer your question okay calcium food oh goodness it's a giant yeah, hold on. Keep talking. Let me peruse this. Okay. Well, I saw a question up there or a statement about I, I do floss, but I still get build up anyway. Mm-hmm. So here's the really frustrating thing about teeth and, and maybe the the um, 
good news for uh, me as a practitioner <laughs> is that um, n none of us, so it, it, not even me, none of us get 100% of the stuff off of our teeth 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then there's also the body, um, just the, your own body chemistry. Mm -hmm. Some people are just great uh, calculus builder uppers and some people are more prone to plaque and I, I if I had the answer to that then we'd all have perfect teeth I know I used to have tons of tartar the hard one mm -hmm. the hard one tartar build up and when I did gas it got better I didn't specifically do phosphorus like I have some people do um, but yeah it did it did just get better <laughs> right. I don't know they used to scrape forever so keep in mind about digestion, how it is, you know, it that starts right here, right? And then um, then there's, you know, it's a tube and twisty stuff and out. So th there's this whole process that, that happens inside. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, I, I oh, one thing that I didn't put in the tools for uh, oral health is a tongue scraper, and I don't have one with me here. Mm -hmm either but I actually prefer the the long ones that bend as opposed to the ones that almost look like a razor blade that you yeah. scrape yeah and um, in Ayurvedic medicine they suggest that every morning you stick out your tongue in the mirror and see what color it is and then mm. then scrape it and see what color comes off mm. and I find that now mm. they have I'm not an Ayurvedic practitioner and I need one to answer this question <laughs> for me because they they well, they have different language. They would say, oh, you know, this color means your fire is out of balance right. or your earth is out of balance. So, and the, those words don't really mean a lot to right. me. But one of the things I've noticed when people do scrape their tongues um, regularly, they see these patterns. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, huh, I had ice cream last night and now the coating mm -hmm. on my tongue is this. Yeah, and I know better than to eat dairy, but I had it anyway, <laughs> or or wheat or whatever their right. their points are. And, so it can help. And some people notice, yeah. you know, it's so interesting that my tongue turns yellow or brown or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I get sick. Mm. So th these are just clues that can really help with, yeah, like figuring out what's what's going on in there. Interesting. Okay, so a little bit of about calcifood, um, which is a standard process thing. So it is raw, cold processed veal bone. So they just grind up bone powder, basically. So that means it's going to have all of the building blocks for the bone. So what's interesting is, if you're seeing this for gums, is it more about bone or bone connection to the gums that's the support instead of trying to focus on healing the gums? So maybe the key to unrecede gum lines, is that what you'd say, would be to focus on bone support as opposed to gum support. Um, could be. So it says it is, um, for building bones, it's calcium and phosphorus in correct proportion. Mm -hmm. um, it, they say lots of things about lots of things. Calcium, blah, 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 phosphorus, blah, blah, blah. Here is. Calcium lactates will often prevent a cold from really taking hold. If the cold exists, it mean, meaning that you need cataplex AC, so vitamins A and C as well, or you're too alkaline. So it looks like phosphorus is important in the energy cycle, which you said earlier. Soil in Wisconsin is high in calcium, low in phosphorus. You get a lot of info in this chapter. And in Kentucky, it's high in phosphorus and low in calcium. And the resources there are not contented like Wisconsin, but they're jumpy. Um, hmm. Oh, that would make sense because they, they have more phosphorus, right? Right. And that's phosphorus the, is the get up and go, go. Yeah. and calcium is the rest and calm. Um, okay. Powder, veal, bone. They take the spines and ribs of veal and grind them up into the powder, freeze dry the powder, uh, and dry it and uh, add defatted wheat germ to absorb the marrow to get it not so greasy. Then they grind the frozen bone to a fine powder and sell it as calcifood powder. Unheated, it's the only one available unheated. Well, and you know what that makes me think about too is um, cataplex C that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that has bone, uh, bone, uh, bone, uh, veal bone in it as well. Oh, did not so, ever notice. And that. the vitamins, the whole food vitamin C right. complex. Right. So veal bone. Um, Carol asked, do you recommend tongue scraping? Absolutely, I do. Is there a particular way that you recommend doing it? Stick out your tongue and <laughs> scrape it. <laughs> and so some people do prefer a tongue scraper. Some just use their toothbrush. Okay. And, like the bristles and, of it is okay? Yes. Okay. And Good, just, that's what I do. <laughs> and uh, scrape it off that way. Yeah, the, the tongue actually does harbor bacteria as well. Okay. So... And there, there are a lot of things you can tell about digestion and mm -hmm. uh, it, by what's on your tongue. Makes sense. And we'll talk about that another time. Makes sense. Great. All right. We'll give a few. We'll give fifteen seconds or thirty seconds for any more questions coming in. Thank you, Vicky. That was really great. Thank you so for having fun. me, and yeah. I would like to thank all of you who listen. Thank you so much for your mm -hmm. time and attention and your questions and comments. Yes. And. Um, Let's see, I just want to take a glance. Do we get everybody's? I think we did get all the questions that came in. We'll give them 15 seconds or another 15 before that to type their question up. Um, okay, so we have a couple more classes coming up next month. Um, we are going to have, I'm going to talk about, I always forget what I'm talking about. Give me a minute. But uh, on the second or, oh, let me look at a calendar. I'm actually on February on this calendar. That's a problem. Um, the 20th, um, Emily Roper is going to talk with us, and she does uh, child uh, primitive reflex things. So I'm really excited for her coming to talk. And I'm going to talk about something the second week. She's talking the fourth, if I remember, because I think there's five Tuesdays. Yeah, on the sixth, I'm talking about something I'm really excited about, but I can't think of what it is right now. <laughs> So hopefully you can join us or these are always available on replay. But if you join us live, you can ask your questions and get personal answers, which is great. So uh, you are welcome, Nancy and everyone. And thank you so much for coming, everyone. Share this with your friends if it makes sense. We really want to get this out. And I was just talking to someone here and she said she came to the talk and learned about the brushing and that changed her life. And I would say that wow. was huge, too. It just blows your mind of. Why did no one ever teach me that? Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that wisdom with us. Very Thank much. you so much. So, yeah. and I would like to offer to all of you listening that uh, for uh, a free twenty-minute, uh, like one-on-one, -on -one, am I brushing my teeth right? If you mm -hmm. feel like you need that, I'll just offer that. Awesome, awesome. If you're here in the area, I have her cards, but um, I'll put the contact info at the bottom of the YouTube video so you can click to her website. And um, this is, you know, forever, actually, because we record these. So <laughs> do you want to put a limit on your 20 minute thing or like they mentioned that they watched you here and they get it? Well, I'll see if. Uh, well, that's a good point. Maybe to I the end of the year. <laughs> maybe to the end of the year. There we go. Right. There so we if go. you were in 2021 and you mentioned that you were here, you get the 20 minute <laughs> free thing. Does that All sound right. good? Sounds good. Great. All right. All right. You're welcome, Carol. Okay. Bye, everybody.